That cave, Robin speaking. Well, I think we've gotten the right number. Is this Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin himself? In the flesh, citizen. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we are so very excited to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor who many of you grew up watching on TV's Batman, and he's also joining us to talk about his animal activism and his wonderful foundation, Gentle Giants and the Gentle Giants Dog Food. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very excited to welcome actor Burt Ward to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome, Burt. Well, it's great to be on your show, guys. I just went to your website, and I love the way your website looks. Uh, cult Radio a go go. Wow! Kind of, uh, reminds me of our show. Yes. I, I can't. And really, it was inspired by your show. That whole thing. I was a Batman kid. I was like ten years old when it was on, and I was there for the original pilot. And I just thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened. And who would ever think we'd be talking about it all these years later? Exactly. Exactly. Well, it just shows you have excellent taste. <laughs> well, I'm I'm so excited. I'm already finding out things about you, like you have Goofy on your answering machine. I thought that was great. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you how that happens. I'll, I'll tell you how that happens. At one of my appearances, I met a gentleman by the name of Bill Farmer, who for the last 30 years has been doing the voice of Goofy. Oh. And uh, so uh, I thought, wow, what a great thing, you know. Uh, so we kind of exchanged uh, voicemail answering messages. You know what I mean? That's, that's great. Cool. So it, it's cool because to me that says not only are you a pop culture icon, you're a pop culture fan. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, no, that's fun. And, uh, you know, um, well, as you know, of course, I played Robin for all the years on Batman. Right. And, and after that, I've done like, oh, I think something like, 7,000 personal appearances with 8 million and eight and a half million autograph signs over the years. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been wild and crazy. And uh, since then, I've also done two Batman movies uh, in the last couple of years, uh, animated with my voice. Uh, uh, the first one was Return of the Cape Crusaders. Uh, Adam West did the Batman voice. I did Robin voice. And then mm -hmm. the second one, uh, Batman versus Two-Face. Again, Adam West did the voice of Batman. I did the voice of Robin. And then William Shatner portrayed Two-Face. Wow, that's incredible. You know, I, I saw a rumor online and don't know if it's true. And I, I thought even you made a comment about it, but I can't really remember. It's being said there could be another one with Adam West having voiced the part along with you. But I, I don't know how this was done, whether it was footage you guys didn't use. What, is that true? There could be another one? Well, uh, I mean, I, I, now that honestly I don't know about. They, they certainly could. There's enough footage and uh, there's enough technology. Uh, it's actually kind of scary, but they could actually recreate using his voice uh, new, a new film. But uh, I haven't heard about that yet, and I certainly imagine that I will hear about it if it's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Now, wow. Knowing that you worked with Adam for so long, and you guys were also very close friends personally, I mean, how do you, how do you feel about that? We've talked to different actors who have different opinions on kind of the magic of technology. Some is like, okay, well, yes, it has its time and place, and others are like, no, don't really like it. You know, if you know if that cart that cart is passed, it's done. How do you feel if they were to do this and kind of splice yeah. and dice and recreate it? Well, uh, actually, I think it's pretty cool technology. Um, my wife and I are very into computers and technology, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, during the promotion of the second Batman feature, uh, I was doing interviews, uh, uh, you know, over the phone in the U.K., and there were people who were saying, okay, so I guess that's the end. And I say, no, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. you know, what do you mean? What do you mean? You know, and, and uh, I mean, uh, I just was saying that it's not necessarily the end at all. And uh, I think the studio got a little concerned about that. But uh, uh, on the other hand, it may turn out that uh, my uh, ideas and suggestions and answers were uh, not far off from the truth. Right. right. Wow. 
Yeah, and there's other stuff, too, that we could be seeing light of. I mean, there was some kind of a, a strange reunion thing you did with Adam a long time ago that was kind of like a Justice uh, League of America come to life. A uh, Legend of the Superheroes, I believe it was called. I mean, has that ever been put on DVD? Uh, you know, uh, that was a two-parter. That was well, two movies, two full-length features that were on television. And then there was another one, Return to the Batcave, The Misadventures with Adam and Bert, which was a uh, CBS Sunday night uh, movie of the week. Right. That was done. And uh, now uh, it's just been announced at Comic-Con in San Diego this last weekend that uh, I've been... Uh, I'm going to, I don't know exactly what I'm going to portray, but uh, I've committed to uh, do a, uh, a character on the upcoming Supergirl television series. Oh, nice. You know something? I love yeah. that show because that show, and, and she's so beautiful to play Supergirl, okay. but they pay homage to old school uh, superheroes. They've, one of the characters on there is played by Linda Carter. And, and, you know, they've had different people on from the different genres of superhero stuff. And, and that's a great thing to know that they're, you know, going to have you on like that. That'd, that'd be awesome. Well, uh, you, you know what it says? Well, here, here's the exact release. It's got my picture, and this was at Comic-Con. It says, holy cavalcade of cameos, Batman. <laughs> Burt Ward joined CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. So uh, I, I'm uh, I'm still learning about that whole uh, Infinite Earths crossover, but it involves a uh, a Batwoman and a Supergirl and uh, Flash and other Legends of Tomorrow. So right. uh, I, I don't know too much about it yet, but uh, it's going to be uh, we're going to film it sometime in uh, October. Perfect. Yeah, you know, I guess we've kind of grown up because with you there was Batgirl, and now. Uh, the CW is putting out Batwoman. I, I mean, you know, that's, that's got to be exciting. But I want to find out because everybody loved Yvonne Craig so much. Uh, Good-looking woman, and, and I miss her so much. I mean, what was she like to work with? She was a very, very sweet person. Uh, I remember even and after the series, uh, she came out to visit my wife and I, and she loved dogs and you know, we uh, we operate the largest giant free dog rescue in the world, General Giant. And at all times, for the last 25 years, we've had a minimum of 50 dogs in our house. Wow. wow. And uh, 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 actually, we started with the giant breeds, giant Great Danes, St. Bernard's, Irish Wolfhounds, English Mastiffs. And uh, over the years, because of rescuing animals, we actually have... 45 different breeds of dogs living with us. Uh, there's only 164 different breeds altogether <laughs> that exist. And we've got about one third of them here. So I, I can truthfully say that I've gone to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> now, we want to talk We want to talk a lot about the foundation. Uh, we here are animal lovers. Uh, we have always had and still have animals that we have adopted and rescued we honestly believe that you should go through a foundation to adopt or rescue versus going and buying a dog from a breeder um so right. how did you and and tracy start this i mean i know you started with with great danes but but what gave you the idea of saying hey i can do something about this and i should well, it's one of these things that you never expect to do. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, what happened was uh, uh, a little over 25 years ago, my wife and I moved to where we are now, where we're living, and uh, we had our daughter, uh, and uh, we decided to get her uh, a, a giant breed dog, and it was either going to be an a Irish wolfhound or a Great Dane. Because we, we both like those breed, particular breeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the, it, well, there weren't any Irish wolfhounds available, but we heard about Great Danes that needed to be rescued. Right. And meaning that they were living in someone's home, but for one reason or another, they, they had to be given up. Maybe the people were moving, or, or maybe they're, well, they couldn't keep the dog, whatever the situation was. So we rescued our first Great Dane, and then we heard about another one needing rescue. And we did that, and then the then we heard of others, but they were in people's homes. They weren't in a shelter where there was an immediate danger of you know being put to death. Mm -hmm. right. um, 
we, so we didn't take those. And about two or three weeks later, we heard that the ones that we didn't take actually were taken to shelters and put to sleep. Oh. And we just like thought, wow, that's terrible. Yeah. How did that happen? And it turned out that as we found out at the time, that each breed of dog has a rescue. So there's a Chihuahua rescue, there's German Shepherd rescues. Dogs are rescued by breed, but the person that had been rescuing Great Danes, which was a, a lady, she herself had died, and we didn't know that. And uh, it was the first week in August of 1994 that I, when we found this out, that I said to my wife, Tracy, we can't let these dogs die. Right. I mean, they're the most gentle giants. The bigger they are, the more gentle they are. They're like babies. We've got to do something. And she said, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, look, you know, I think we need to take them. We've, you know, we've got the room here. We have five acres and uh, in the heart of the city where we live. And I, I, I said, we can take these dogs. And I'm sure it's only going to be a couple of weeks until we find somebody who'll take them, you know, uh, who's uh, in rescue and, and do this, you know, all the time. So <clears throat> we took the dogs. Uh, a, a couple of weeks went by. Nobody came to <laughs> rescue us. Uh, <laughs> and by the end of August of 1994, we had more than 100 in our home. Wow. <sighs> Okay, and 62 puppies under seven weeks of age where we rescued these litters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, we, in all the years, we've never bred a dog, would never breed a dog. There's too many dogs that need rescue. But there was all these Great Dane litters, and puppies, and this and that. And then the animal shelters started calling us and saying, well, we heard that you took it from this shelter. Can you take our Great Dane? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> And so, but, but here's where it got really crazy. Then after the animal shelters heard about us, people who had to give up their dogs heard about us, and we were getting phone calls, can you take my Great Dane? Uh, okay, okay, all right, we'll do that. So they would drive over with a Great Dane and then maybe a Chihuahua they had. And I would say, oh, well, what are you doing with that Chihuahua? Well, we got to take that to the shelter. You know, you rescue Great Danes, but I guess they'll just have to put our Chihuahua to sleep. Mm. I said, well, wait a minute. You know? <laughs> and, and you know what it is. And first thing you know, we sort of justified that all these dogs were taken were Great Danes. So my wife has redefined the term Great Dane. If it has four legs and a tail, it must be a Great Dane. <laughs> A Chihuahua definitely thinks he's a great Dane, so I mean, they have, they have well, the ego. You know, it's funny you should say that. I'll tell you, the bigger the dog, the smaller they think they are. Yeah. The yeah. smaller the dog, the bigger they think they are. There's nothing funnier when you see a great Dane try to get into a little bed that was made for a Chihuahua, because it's, it's just so oh, funny. Well, you, well, if you go to our website, GentleGiantsDogFood.com, you'll see 50 dogs trying to get in bed with us, okay? <laughs> Right there at the top of our website, it's an 11-minute video, which we slowed it down to slow motion because otherwise we'd give you a headache in about 20 seconds to see 50 dogs moving in every direction simultaneously. But uh, that that's, runs about 11 minutes, and you can see all those dogs trying to get in bed with us. And one of our dogs, uh, Max, 295-pound English Mastiff. Wow. He, 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 he gets up on the bed and he sits down on my ankle and nearly broke my ankle and my wife thought it was the funniest thing she ever saw. <laughs> well, you know, you know, Bert, that could put a real cramp in your relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, and it, and it's so funny because uh, earlier this year I was on Ellen uh, on January second. I was on Ellen's show and Ellen DeGeneres had invited me to be on her show and what an amazing lady. Oh yeah, She's just mm -hmm. fantastic. She and Portia are incredible incredible people they're totally into animal rescue and uh, you know they they know we are uh and they th and in fact they think uh, we're probably nuts a little bit because we rescue so many animals we do this night and day for 25 years and uh you know we we uh, uh and people say they, they say well like gosh you were so into rescue and what you know, how can you handle all those dogs and you know they really are like children and my my wife tracy she is just amazing with them, you know what I mean? And yeah. and people say to me sometimes, well, but, you know, wouldn't you rather be rescuing children? I said, wait <laughs> a minute, there's nothing wrong with saving kids, but there's a lot of people doing that, but there's not a lot of people saving Great Danes. That's right. As well as these other breeds. 
And the, and the second point is, I've never had a dog ask me to buy him a car at 16 years. <laughs> there That's you go. And, and, and saving an animal is, is heroism as well as, you know, saving a child or an infant. How did this evolve into something else for you? Because congratulations, your brand of dog food has uh, hit Walmart. Now, that's a big thing. I mean, it's all over the country and outside the country right. in Walmarts. How did the Genesis evolve yeah. for the creation of this product that you're offering that's really saving dogs' lives, right? Well, what it is is this. You know, we we were rescuing all these dogs. And, when, and just imagine if you had more than 50 giant dogs in your home. Okay, I mean, now, of course, we have all these different sizes from tiny two pounds up to the 300 pounds i mean that's a giant range 45 different breeds but you know the, here's here's the thing if you go to the trouble to save an animal's life and i mean the trouble that we go to is we were flying dogs in from even foreign countries wow. we had dogs coming here I, we flew in six dogs from taiwan we we had dogs from from europe i mean these giant great danes and stuff that you know and people heard about it all over the world you know uh, but in any event if you go to the trouble to save an animal's life you obviously want it to live as long as possible and when we first started great danes and these other breeds mastiffs and stuff well mastiffs live only six to eight years great danes traditionally only live seven to nine years mm -hmm. and the ones we couldn't adopt because we were adopting right and left in fact we got up to at one point about 50 dogs a week that we were adopting into homes and we were checking every home out had to make sure that people would take good care of it and all that kind of stuff but the point is once we didn't adopt we would lose one mm. and when that happened oh my gosh my wife and i would literally sob and so we 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 said to each other and this is probably uh 20 years ago that we got to do something i don't know what we can do but we can't let these animals die so young. Right. So first thing is we discovered that by the way we cared for dogs and fed them, we could actually help them live longer. So we have this special feeding and care program on our GentleGiantsDogFood.com website that your listeners can go to and read. I mean, actually, because we keep updating it, that it what took us 25 years of our life to learn People can go to our website, GentleGiantsDogFood.com, and then click on the menu, Special Feeding and Care Program. They can read and learn what took us 25 years to learn right. in less than 25 minutes. I mean, that, that's pretty amazing stuff. And that will add three to four years, maybe even five years, to your dog's life just by the way you care for them and feed them. And, but, and then we came to the conclusion that, well, okay, so we've got Great Danes. Instead of living only seven to nine years on average, we were getting these dogs living 10 to 12 years, and even that is pretty impressive. But we wanted to continue, and we thought, well, suppose we, for our rescue, just for our rescue, that we make our a special food, we, you know, we can afford it, so let's make the finest food in the world, and we'll feed it to our dogs. Right. And we went to all these nutritionists, different companies. Oh, my gosh, what we went through. And people would say, oh, well, you can use this ingredient. And say, well, we'd look it up and say, well, I don't know. That doesn't look good to us. That's, you know, there's controversy. Anyway, by deduction over time, we found and made what we believe is the finest dog food in the world. It's different than every other dog food. Dogs love it, but it doesn't have all the fat in it that other dog foods have. And if you ever fed or touched dog food in your fingers it's got a greasy feel to it yeah. ours doesn't we don't have the grease on the outside because we didn't add fat on the inside which dogs don't like the smell of fat they love the smell of meat so long story short we don't have all the fat inside or outside of our food we don't put too much protein in it that causes dogs to actually have kidney disease if it's over 22 percent protein so we did all these things and we learned all this stuff and wow. guess what our dogs started living longer and longer. And now our dogs are living up to 27 and a half years. Wow. And it's not just how long they live, it's a quality of life running around like puppies in their 20s. Nobody else has been, I've ever seen anybody have anything like this. And, and our dogs are consistently living so much longer. I think half of our dogs right now in our rescue have already lived more than twice their normal lifespan. I mean, just, just think that's consistency. So 
Anyway, what happened was we we're making this food and just feeding it to our dog. Mm -hmm. Well, people would come and adopt the dog, and they'd see a, an 18-year-old Great Dane, you know, twice the normal lifespan, and uh, and they'd say, well, how, how, did, how do you keep that dog living so long and so healthy? That dog is still running around like a puppy. <laughs> well, because of the food. They said, well, well, we want to have the food. We have adopted a dog from you. Why can't we have the food that you're feeding your dog? <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, I, you know, well, yeah, but I, I never thought of that. I mean, it's a plain white bag. So we had to go through all the legalese of, you know, proper labeling and all of that kind of stuff. And one of the adopters was a store manager of a local grocery chain called Stater Brothers. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have 176 stores. And he, you know, started feeding his dog. Well, you know, it, it, long story short, it got up to their management and they invited me to come in and this is in 2008 11 years ago and uh, they said you know we want to build this brand with you I mean what you're doing and and you know we're very supportive of, of hometown companies mm -hmm. but what you're doing with dogs is amazing and we think they the public would like it well guess what for the last probably eight or nine years we've been the number one or number two dog food <laughs> that they've sold in their store uh, and, uh, because dogs are living so much longer. In fact, recently, uh, a lady came up to me, because we also shop there at, at that grocery store, and she said, uh, are you Burt Ward? And I said, yes. She said, I just want to thank you. I said, oh, well, well thank you uh, for saying that, but what for? She said, my vet told me that my dog would never reach 10 years of age. Mm. My dog is 15 and a half oh. years old now, and I attribute that to your dog food. I said, well, that's very nice. She said, every year I take my dog in for his annual checkup. And every year after the checkup, my vet looks at the dog and looks at me and says, I see it. I just don't believe what I'm seeing. Wow. It was great, and too. So that, it's, it's real. And, and so we decided, okay, well, you know, maybe we really can do something because this is our charity. My wife and right. I. We don't take any salary from this. Right. We don't. We've never taken any money from our rescue. We never. We don't take any money. This. This is not about money. This is about loving animals. So we we went to Walmart and we said, look, we basically will sell this to you at our cost. Can you put it out there where people in America, everybody who loves their dog, could have their dog have a chance to live five or ten years longer and healthier, much better quality of life. And they said, sure, because their concept is they want to have the highest quality at the lowest price. Right. So this fit in right with their marketing. And now we're in thousands of their stores all across America. And in fact, we're now in over 400 Walmart super centers in Canada as wow. well. And uh, and it's amazing. They, the, the people, they, they everybody that, 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 that writes to us, they write things like, I started feeding my 12-year-old dog uh, your food a month ago, and my dog is now running around like a puppy <laughs> playing again. Thank you for giving me my puppy back. Wow! You know, and that is the that is the satisfaction we get. You know, and 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 we re oh, another reason we we didn't take any money from this is because we also know there's a lot of people in our country who you know maybe they're older as an example maybe they're on a limited or fixed income you know what i mean uh, maybe uh, their kids have grown up and they're gone and and maybe that dog is the only thing they've got left in their life right. and for every single person out there who really loves their dog if i if my wife tracy and i can give their dog an extra five or ten years more life and a healthier still running around like a puppy not only is it fantastic for the dog but look what it does for the person yeah see that's the thing you guys realize the thing that's the most important thing to know when you own a dog and that is it's not just an animal it's a member of your family it's it's, family. it's your child it's like your child a absolutely and people who love their dogs just think for a minute to have something you love that's living and precious for an extra five or ten years longer that to me that is life is the most precious commodity in the world mm -hmm. and and we, we the way we we make our contribution uh to the world and it's kind of interesting because people say well i don't know how could you be an actor and be so involved in rescuing dogs i said well wait a minute yeah <laughs> on batman 
we were every week we were rescuing people and saving lives in Gotham City. All we're doing is doing the same thing, except we've gone from being a cape crusader to a canine crusader. <laughs> yeah, and and if you get your really nerdy comic book people, they know that in actuality it was never on your show, but in the Batman comics, did you know there was a bat dog? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and then in, in the animated series we did for Filmation, there was a character called Bat Mike. There you and go. That was a, 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 another character. So. But we were, you know, and, and, and it's funny because Adam, who was my really dear friend, I mean, we were such great buddies. Yeah. Um, you know, he had his German Shepherd Stormy. And, and, and in fact, you know, Adam was one of the most amazing people. He had a sense of comedy like no one I've ever met in my life. I mean, he was a naturally funny person. And when we would make these appearances together after the series and all across the country, you know, uh, uh, just right up to his death in 2017 i mean we we would do these panels where you come out and there's like 5000 people sitting there they've got these huge you know convention center rooms set up uh, sometimes even more than 5000 and uh, they'd introduce me i'd come out and say hello to everybody and then adam would they didn't and he'd be introduced and he would come out and it's so funny what adam would do he would come out and say ladies and gentlemen i'm just going to stand here for a few moments and allow you to admire my in incredible physical development <laughs> and you know people are laughing and laughing and laughing you know and then he says you know would you like to know how at 88 years old i stay in such great shape and they say oh yeah 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 he says every morning i have a bowl of burt ward's gentle giant dog food <laughs> and look at my condition God bless him! I mean, wow. He was, oh, he was hilarious, and I would be crying, laughing so large and uh, so long, and 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 other people. And what we would do on stage is that we never ever planned anything. We never said, "Oh, you say this," and I never, never, never. It was always spontaneous. But he and I would tease each other, and even though the audience didn't know, I mean, they could tell. You know what I'm saying? They could tell by someone's expression when you're really going after them. In, in a in a fun way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With something right. that's kind of embarrassing. Right. And he'd do that to me, I'd do that to him. But they loved it and it's the same kind of style like we did on Batman. It, it is was the yes. the double meaning, the the suggestive ideas, the all of the campy stuff that, that people that made our show different than just a regular television show. I loved all the stories that came out because I, I thought it was so funny. That, that was told, and I think you told some of the stories that, of course, women loved Adam West, and we've interviewed actresses that have done scenes with Adam West, and we've actually met Adam West, and, and the girls right. were all over him. I guess a lot of that spilled over to you, too. I know you're happily married, and I don't want, like, Tracy to hit you in the, in the head or anything, but there, <laughs> there was a lot of girls that came your way because of the Batman thing, and, and, and Adam West kind of encouraged that, didn't he? Well, uh, you know, we, certainly before I was married and, and, and when Adam was married, you know, we obviously, you know, we're normal guys and we, you know, had a lot of fun and like anybody else would, I would imagine. But, but you know, Adam, Adam had this amazing sense of humor. Yeah. In other words, in fact, I'll tell you something. The, the president of Filmation Studios, which was a very prominent uh, um, animation company, mm -hmm. Uh, his name was Norm Prescott, and uh, I, I, we would go in and we'd do a couple of shows at a time, you know, they're 30-minute shows, and uh, I remember one time he said to me, he said, you know, he says, I've never met anybody like Adam West, and I said, really? Uh-huh. He says, he said, <laughs> he says, Adam is the only person I ever met in my entire life, this is the executive producer, who says that everything he says has a sexual connotation. <laughs> and, I mean, I mean. Let, let me just give you an example, okay? And, okay, and it and it and it's so disarming and catches people off guard, and people are like speechless. We could be signing autographs, okay? And I remember this is when we were wearing our costumes, and uh, you know, you'd get some uh, young ladies come up and. And uh, and and they'd be getting an autograph, and he says, and he's in his costume. He says, he says to one of them, he says, you know, I, I've got an itch in my ear. W would you scratch my cowl? 
you know, and they, they're like, oh, oh, well, all right. So they lean over and kind of just scratch the, the, the ear on, on his cowl, right? Mm-hmm. And and he goes, oh. he says, you know, he says, you are very beautiful. And just having met you, I'm getting strange stirrings in my utility belt. <laughs> Well, and, from what, from and, what, you know, it's like, oh my God, Adam, <laughs> oh, you know, and and so you know, but he was such a funny guy with such a wonderful sense of humor, and I, I, I honestly believe that the chemistry we had in working together was one of the reasons our show was so successful because for kids it was the hero worship, right? You know what I mean, right? Of of. I mean, my gosh, who wouldn't, as a child, want to ride in the Batmobile, climb walls, fight heinous villains, you know what I mean? And all of the kinds of stuff. So for kids, it was incredible hero worship. For adults, it was the nostalgia of the comic book. I mean, people that had read that comic book now seen it come to life. And then for the college kids and teenagers, which back in the 60s, that was a period of time when college kids and teenagers they didn't want to be in the house i mean everybody wanted to be out like you know you know cruising uh, these outdoor restaurants on friday nights and everybody wanted to be out doing something not inside watching television right but batman was such a hit with all the campy style and double meanings that on tuesday and thursday nights if you were in a college dorm you had to come an hour and a half early to get a seat to be able to, to sit through and watch our show. Oh, I That's know. That's how popular it is. I, I know. And, and the, the guest stars you had on there now, I'm getting a question from the audience. They want to know, of all the lovely ladies uh, that was on, what were your opinions of Donna Lauren and also Leslie Gore? I, I love the episode of Leslie Gore. Her and that little cat outfit, I fell in love so much. Well, yeah, uh, I'll tell you something. Um, both of them, terrific people. Ter- absolutely terrific uh, Donna Lauren, I, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I almost got in trouble with the studio because in the show I was supposed to kiss her on the cheek, okay? And at the time I was involved in a relationship, and being the uh, 20-year-old prude that I was, I said, I can't kiss somebody else on the cheek on camera. <laughs> and the executive producer called me in. And he sat me in the middle of the room in a chair and walked around with one of these riding crops for a horse, you know. Oh my and he's kind of hitting his hand with that in a, and saying, now you better do that, you know what I mean? And uh, I'll never forget that. Uh, and I, I ended up, you know, uh, actually they, they turned around. They had I, We worked out a compromise. She kissed me on the cheek, okay. So, uh, but, 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 you know, it was a different time than it is in today's world. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, the 60s. Uh, this was a period of the flower children and and free love and and you know it was a, a really kind of a wholesome for the most part world at that time so so that was that was uh and 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 uh, donna i run into every so often uh she and her husband very very nice people mm-hmm. i see them at some of these events and uh and and and, and we we have our photo taken together and people ask questions so that's cool now in the case of leslie gore Leslie, uh, what a voice. I mean, yeah. oh, amazing. Now, they cre- a friend of mine who was the editor of my book, his name was Stanley Ralph Ross, an amazing comedy writer. He, he, kinda, he was very similar to Adam, and the big guy with an amazing sense of humor. He wrote 32 episodes of Batman, and he actually created the TV series Wonder Woman. Mm. So you know, he's just a, wow. an amazingly talented man. But... He wrote this episode, with, and he created, uh, and he had that same kind of, you know, suggestive humor, right, mm-hmm, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So he, he wrote this episode of Catwoman, where Catwoman had, just like Batman, had like a young right-hand, young assistant, right. Robin. Uh, Catwoman had, had a young assistant named Pussycat, okay? So he had <laughs> the scene where I meet her, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and... Uh, and the dialogue that he gave to Leslie Gore uh, when she meets me, she says, hello, Robin. I say, hi, who are you? And she says, my name is Pussycat, but you can call me Cat. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just that 
pause. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just that pause. And that was that same Batman crazy style that just permeated audiences. It was above the heads of kids, so they didn't think anything of it. But people that listened to it, they all of a sudden caught that, you know? And and even, and in fact, there was a special line written in the opening episode. If you remember, this was uh, against, uh, we were fighting against the Riddler. This was at the... Uh, uh, it, it was well. It was a kind of a takeoff of the Hollywood whiskey a go go. I think it was called What a Way to Go Go or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a disc attack, and Batman goes in, and he, of course he's in a costume, and all these people are dancing, and and the hat girl comes up and say, "Oh, can I, can I take your cape?" And he said, "No, no." And then the Mater D comes up and says, "Oh, Batman, uh, would you like a ringside table?" He said, "Oh, I, I'll stand at the bar. I shouldn't wish to attract attention." Right? <laughs> okay. Well, of course dress like that, right, of course you would attract attention, you know. Um, and it, that is what set up the style for the audience to understand what we were doing. You know what yeah. I mean? Where it, uh, it by, by the things we said, adults would get the idea that, hey, this is not just straight television. We are we're, we're taunting and teasing and playing with our audience. And it worked. And, and you know, there's one other person I have to ask you. Now, it, it really worked out well for you because I guess you uh, are and have been and have always been an expert uh, of some type in martial arts. And in fact, for your audition for Batman, you actually broke a board with your hand and showed him some of your prowess. But you had to do a scene, and I believe it was the first fight between Robin and Cato, Bruce Lee of the Green Hornet. Uh, talk about Bruce Lee. I mean, I know you got to be friends with him and, and remain friends after the show. Well, yeah, actually, I met Bruce before we worked together. Oh. And we lived in the same complex, and we used to spar together, which is a, a fighting, but you pull the punches. And uh, and he was an incredible martial artist. And the piece of trivia is that Bruce Lee's first filmed fight scene of his career, and of course, you know, became the most famous cinema martial artist in the world, mm -hmm. but his very first fight scene on film was Fighting Me on Batman. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so it was uh, we it, it was it was it was fun because, you know, uh, we had already known each other. and We'd already sparred and then they had made it very clear they didn't want it to look too realistic. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. They, they don't want anybody to really go after each other. But it, it was it was wonderful. In fact, uh, on, a, on a friendship note, um, he and he, he he and his wife, Linda, and at that time, uh, Brandon was like six months old, his son. Uh, we'd go down into Chinatown uh, in Los Angeles, and, of course, the fact that he lived in uh, Hong Kong for 10 years, he knew all the most authentic, special, not even on the menu type of food to order, and we, we really had a nice time. You, you know what I mean? Right. It was a, we were friends, uh, and, and I was given a, a great honor, actually, um, uh, now it's, uh, it's four years ago, where I was uh, inducted into the International Karate and Kickboxing Hall of Fame. Wow. So nice. uh, that was a great honor for me. But, yes, I had studied martial artists. And, 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 in fact, what was interesting is that karate came to the United States in 1959, okay? And I had been studying for two years before um, Batman, where I tried out in 1965. So it was really new in the U.S. You know, it was not something that the average person even knew about. And when I did break, break break a board for my screen test, that's something that people, you, you just had never seen anything right. like that. Right. You know what I mean? It right. was very special. Well, it so, was, it, it worked yeah, really, great time. it worked really well in, in the fact that I'm sure, you know, people underestimated you. I mean, I don't think they thought you really knew how to do that stuff for real. And then if you ever did exhibitions or exhibitions, I can imagine they were shocked. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, we, we actually... Uh, and, I, and I did get a chance on Batman to use the martial arts because there were some times, and it it wasn't really discussed too much because it wasn't supposed to happen. But some of the special, you know, the the guys that the stuntmen and stuff, you know, when it, it came to being on camera and, and you know, and everybody wanting to look realistic, sometimes there were accidental punches that were real. And and of course I responded back, you know what I mean? And I mean, and, and the, the producers didn't like all of that because it got it got real sometimes. 
but but um, it was it was a lot of fun to do the show and and you know the, our whole concept for for families was that you know this is a show that you can watch that there wasn't any real violence. I mean, we actually had to go out of our way to make sure that that no one you know really believed anybody got hurt mm-hmm. that there was no blood there was no you you know what I'm saying right it's right. uh, uh, it's kind of film fighting if you will you know uh, but but it was a lot of fun doing that and and of course you know for me. Uh, I had a great time, and, and kids, by the way, you know, there were a lot of kids that, that wanted to be Batman, and, and a lot, I think, even more that wanted to be Robin, right. and the reason why is that, you know, if, if you're a, a 10-year-old kid, and you look in the mirror, you know you're not six foot four like Batman, right? right. You know you're not uh, over 16 years of age to drive the Batmobile, so... They 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 wanted to be Batman, but they could relate to Robin more because Robin, what you know, wasn't uh, uh, you know was with fifteen and a half, and therefore wasn't able to drive the car. You know what I mean? Was smaller, you know, and all those things. So they vicariously feel like they're you know riding along bat with Batman by emulating Robin. You know you, you know what I mean? Right. And so a lot of kids. Re- they really and and it was fun. Uh, so and of course in today's world it's amazing. I I would I go out and I make appearances sometimes. My wife Tracy and I were at this. Uh, I was a grand marshal this last year in the Huntington Beach parade, which is so gigantic. It's the largest Fourth of July parade in the U.S. And because it attracts more than a hundred thousand people, instead of the regular police security of Huntington Beach, that's Homeland Security takes over. Oh wow! When it's more than a hundred thousand people, and uh, and just before the uh, the the uh, you know the parade, um, a man came up to me and he said, uh, you know, introduce himself. I'm an FBI agent. I'm here, you know, as part of the Homeland Security, and, and but he said something that was very profound. He said, you know, as a kid growing up. I remember watching Batman, and honestly, he said, I might have gone the other way. But because of watching Batman, it really made me want wow. to be in uh, law enforcement. Wow. I mean, you know, I mean, it really reached people, our show, yeah. and, and in sometimes very profound ways. Well, and, you know, you had mentioned that one of the fun things about the show is, is the, the, the campy kind of tongue-in-cheek aspect um, and it was very kitschy. That's why it's lived on for so long. But I wanted to ask you, did that kind of tongue-in-cheek, you know, flavor uh, influence? And if not, what did influence you to uh, record some tracks? You actually did a couple of songs, and I believe you worked with Frank Zappa on those, right? Of which he's a genius. Right. Yeah, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. I mean, first of all, when I met Frank Zappa, I said, oh, my God. And you see, <laughs> and then you look at his band, the Mothers of Invention. These people come out, play music, and they tear everything up. They tear up couches. They tear up their instruments. I've never seen anything like that. And here I am, all American apple pie. I know, I know, yeah. What a contrast. But let me tell you something about Frank Zappa, one of the most brilliant musicians I ever met in my life. He had studied at Columbia University. Oh, let me tell you something. That guy was really smart mm-hmm. really really smart and we did uh, I, I one of the songs they did is uh, they recorded for MGM records was uh, boy wonder I love you right which was um, basically uh, a collection of fan letters real fan letters that I assembled together you know to to create a, a dialogue for a song and uh, that got up to number seven in Chicago and then it got pulled because at the time, in 1966 or 67, you know, and here's an innocent, you know, series of fan letters that I'm reading, and one of them is saying, oh, you know, can you come to my house and spend a week or two, maybe the entire <laughs> summer, I'll make you breakfast in bed, I'll, you know, just totally innocent, you know what I mean? But, oh, no, at that time, oh, you wow. can't have that. You can't have that on the radio. And then, of course, you know, on our show when we were filming, Adam and I, we always pushed the envelope. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we knew what we were doing, and uh, and of course we'd get away with probably more than half of it until the next week when the censors came in. Almost every week, and we got chewed out. You can't do that. You can't put your arm on Batman's shoulder. You can't <laughs> do. You know. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? You know, I've I've got to deliver a message because I, I guess superheroes don't like to use phones or text. Uh, a message from actor Michael Gray who was from Shazam, 
and he says hi to Bert. We haven't seen each other in a long time. Oh yeah, well let me tell you, Michael is a really nice guy. Yes, he is. We work together. We made a lot of personal appearances together, and uh, we have some really funny stories of things that happen out on the road. You know, when you're when you're out touring and you do these appearances. All kinds of crazy things can happen. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was what, what a really nice man. And that, that's nice that he, you know, he he wrote in because uh, I remember had a lot of fun. He a really really sweet human being. You well, know, he's kind of in a position. And I actually asked him because he's been on the show a couple times uh, in, in playing Billy Batson, who was just a normal kid who becomes Captain Marvel. And here you are, Robin, the boy wonder. I asked him if he ever had any aspirations to be. Captain Marvel and not just Billy Batson on screen. What about you? Because, like, in the comic books, Robin actually became Batman, I believe, for a while, or at least became another character named Nightwing. Did you ever hope that maybe there could be a sequel or maybe later on that you could come and take over the role of Batman? I mean, I know you were so... Well, well, that, you, that, you know, you're asking me something that my own wife, Tracy, brought up to me an hour ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> because of this show... This, this this thing coming up with this crossover uh, infinite, uh, this this whole thing with uh, this Supergirl TV series and Batgirl, I mean it's kind of all mixed into one and it's just hit the internet because of being out on uh, uh, you know on the Comic Con news that and people are writing in to asking the same question and uh, in the case of Robin, Robin became um uh, Nightwing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And and there, my my wife has done a whole research on all the characterizations and stuff like that. Um, I I never thought about playing the role of Batman. I didn't envision myself. I envisioned myself more of doing the you know the what what Robin became. Although there was a time that Adam and I were trying very hard to get Warner Brothers to do. A, a Batman with Adam and I as we are. Oh, okay. And 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 the whole I and, and, and how, as we were at the time, I should say. And and the whole idea was that I mean, we thought it would be hilarious. You know, I mean, here here Batman years later, me years later. So you know, a call comes into Gotham City, and and then and, and and you know, he's of course retired from being Batman, but he's got to now rescue uh, the city from some heinous villain, and he goes mm -hmm. over to the closet and. And he and he opens the closet, dust billows out from his cape and cowl. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Robin's having trouble pulling his tights up. I mean, <laughs> you could make something so hilarious that people would be crying. They would be laughing so much. Right. Yeah, you know those, what I mean? Those, those, I, I, we never, had, uh, never came to be. Uh -huh. We had William Cat of The Greatest American Hero on, too. And he had talked about how right. damned uncomfortable that costume was. <laughs> I bet you it cropped you in a few places. It wasn't good. <laughs> Oh, that was the most... I used to call... I mean, it was terribly horrible. Uh, I used to call my tights my python pants because they nearly strangled me to death. <laughs> but but, but when, when I did this screen test and I had to put on that costume, okay, let me tell you something. It, it, there was two wardrobe men that were helping me put this costume on, all right? <laughs> it was the most horrible thing in my entire life. And, it, and, and at my screen test, just before I did the screen test as Robin, okay, I turned to these two guys as I'm trying to find my way to step out of without breaking my neck because, you know, with that mask on, you, you, you have no peripheral vision and you can't see straight down. So I, I, I turned to these two wardrobe guys that had just spent 20 some odd minutes to helping me get into this god awful costume. <laughs> and I said, this is the worst, most uncomfortable thing I've ever worn in my entire life. <laughs> but the good news is, after my screen test, I'll never have to put it on again. <laughs> Famous last words, right? right? Is that urban legend true that I read in my notes here that you did an appearance and your costume was stolen because these college kids was like, let me hold it. And one of them was Conan O'Brien? Yes, that's true. That was, I was voted in 1984. I was voted man of the year at Harvard University. And... Uh, and he was a student then, <laughs> and uh, I had my costume on display, and, uh, you know, he came up with another student and said, we've been requested by, you know, the dean to watch your costume because we've heard that somebody might take it. 
and they took it, and it took me like a day or so to get it back. But uh, no, that that was Conan O'Brien, I, and I uh, he remembers that. I was on his show years later, and uh, he remembered that very well. Wow. <laughs> well, before we before we wrap up, you we have a, a big you honor. have a couple of other things that's that's uh, big announcements. One is a big honor, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the other one I wanted to mention uh, is it's been announced that the Batman 66 exhibit at the Hollywood Museum, that's actually been extended through to next year, right? Yes, yes, and it's fantastic. I anybody that loves our show has got to go see that exhibit. You can spend days in there. It's got every script. It's got my costume, Adam's costume, wow. on, on, ma on mannequins, full size. It's got the villain's costumes. It, both the villains as the costume, the actual costume, and then a recreation next to it because over time it loses color. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, it's got everything. It's got the Batmobile in there wow. uh, on the third floor of the museum. It's, it's amazing. It is, and, and Donnell Dadigan is the, uh, the owner of the museum, the sweetest lady in the world, mm -hmm. and she has just gone to great lengths. They've now got the all six cat women. You know, uh, on our show, there were three cat women. Right. But all together in history, there were actually six cat women. People that played, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. And, I mean, there were other people that, that played it. And, and, and she's got tributes to all of those. And uh, plus, the museum is, itself is fantastic. They just did something with uh, uh, Lee Majors, the, you know what I mean, Six Million Dollar Man. Right. And, 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 and Lindsay Wagner with, uh, you know, the, the, the show that, that, sh that she did, the Bionic, Bionic Woman. Woman. I mean, yeah. it's just fantastic. Yeah, they got uh, Wonder Woman there, too. I mean, you know, that's on display, too, so yeah. uh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, that's true. They have the one, the Wonder Woman, and, you know, uh, so it's, uh, no, it's a, it's a great, it's a great museum. It's, it's fantastic. you got to go if you're in Hollywood. Well, I, I give mine, but Tiffany cannot wait to congratulate you for something. Yes, so uh, we would like to be one of the first to congratulate you. It has been announced that you, now we don't have an exact date yet, but next year, like probably January of 2020, you're getting your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes, that's true, and what an honor. You know, uh, uh, it, it, it's fantastic. Uh, I mean, and I'm, I'm so thrilled by it. Uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you, uh, we did Batman 50 years ago, and I wanted that star for 50 years, but I'm a patient person. Yeah. I'm patient. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to go down there with, with the little broom and everything and clean it off all yeah. the time now when it, when it gets there. So uh, e e Exactly. I'll have to drive the Batmobile over there and uh, with Alfred and, uh, and, and, and dust it off. But uh, it's going to be a big event. Uh, I don't know the exact date yet. There's going to be an announcement well in advance. And uh, there's going to be a lot of celebrities, and I'm hoping all the Bat fans will be there, and there'll be lots of all the TV networks will be there. It's going to be really a, a fun event, and I'm hoping that it'll be uh, in January, uh, right? You know, right after the first of the year. The only thing that could be even cooler is if your star was somewhere in the vicinity of Adam West. Is that a possibility, or do you know? Oh yeah, no, no, it's already been decided. It's going to be right next to us. Yes. We're going to be right next together, dynamic duo. Now that and that is really fantastic too. I, the, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce—they are just amazing people and uh, incredible, and they've gone to such effort to to do this. And boy, I am very thankful for their their assistance. Well, you know, it really is an honor because you know not only are we talking about a show that was fifty years ago, but there is a whole lot of pop culture icons that does not have a star. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think this year, along with mine, uh, Robert De Niro's getting his star. I mean, and, you know, look how long he's been doing movies. No, it, it, is, a, it is a very, not everybody has one, and uh, it's, uh, it's very special. They, they also look to people that do charitable work as well. In yes. other words, um, it, it, they, they want uh, someone, you know, their stars to be people that contribute not just entertainment wise but actually do something for people well you know with with the fact that 25 years my wife and i've been rescuing dogs and now that we we're producing our gentle giants dog food that we're trying to help everybody in america who has a dog live longer mm -hmm. and healthier i mean you know it's it, it's something that you know we 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 do and it's funny my wife tracy she when when i met her she is doing charitable work as well so it uh, it's made for a wonderful 30-year marriage, and we're, we work as a great team together. 
and uh, and you know, and and we have a lot of fun doing this. You know, yeah. we're we're having fun, and 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 I guess I reached a point in my life where I look at it and I say, you know, it's not about what I get anymore. It's I get more happiness of doing things for others. Right. I really do. And you and, know, and it means a lot to me. And and when people come up and if I do these signings occasionally, I do. You know, they'll come up and say, you know. And, Thank you so much. I love my dog so much, and you've done such a great thing for my animal, and and I can't thank you enough. You know, I mean, those are the kinds of things that are so touching that you, you know it really enriches my life and Tracy's life. You know, and and I, uh, I, I mean, we go out together. In fact, I'll tell you something kind of funny. Sure. My, my wife, when we go, we we go places. She comes dressed as Robin's girl. I okay? know. I'm seeing. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> let, let me tell you something. She fills that costume out like you wouldn't believe, far better than I do. And and let me, t- <laughs> oh, she's got her cape. We were just we were just the other night at the Hollywood Bowl, and I mean I think she attracted more attention with that figure than uh, than I did. And uh, it, it was, but but you know it's all in great fun, and we we just have such a good time now. You know, at, at this point in our lives, everything seems to be working well. Well, it's it's a good thing I grew up watching you as Robin, because if it would have been your wife, I'd have reached puberty way too soon. And, and it just <laughs> yes, she, she's a very lovely lady. It's so cool that you guys found each other. You realize you could have married somebody just oh, it's just a Robin thing again. But she she's like the biggest fan in, in the world of of oh everything. my gosh, she does she does our Facebook page. We have a Facebook Gentle Giants Dog Food and Products. But the people write to that because we have Batman stuff on it. Our GentleGiantsDogFood.com website has Batman information on it. And, and, and because she only sleeps two hours a night oh, since she's 10 years old, she's up 22 <laughs> hours a day. And she can, do, she can answer. We get thousands a week. I mean, and you know what I mean? Of, 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 of Facebook messages and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. She answers every one. Damn. And people and people say, you know, how how I, what a cool thing! I'm getting an answer from Bert or his wife, you know, <laughs> and and she answers everybody's little inquiry, and it's just a really cool thing, you know, that she's able to do that. Wow! Now, what? before we wrap this up, though, I just wanted to find out. Of course, we want all of our listeners to head over to gentlegiantsdogfood.com, check out the food. You can get it at Walmart. You can also get it on online retailers too, like Chewy.com and things like that. Yeah, and you're making but, uh, some personal appearances at Walmart too, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I've done some appearances there, and it uh, it really uh, it has very very large crowds and stuff like that, and uh, uh, and 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 of course it's a lot of fun, you know. And and these people, I mean that that I mean they're big fans. They're and it, and it's so funny because they they come to my appearances, and not only do they dress up kind of like you know uh, as as in characters, but they dress their dogs in characters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that takes a lot of trouble to get your dog dressed up and to wear a yeah, costume that yeah. the dog doesn't tear off or, 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 or something. You know, I don't know. It, it, it's all great fun. It, it is now, great fun. where can people go if they, I mean, I'm assuming that they can adopt directly from your guys' rescue. So where would people go if they want to find out about adopting a dog, finding out what dogs are available for adoption? And also, even if they can't adopt, what can they do to help support uh, Gentle Giants? Well, that that's really that's terrific. Okay, in terms of adoption, what has happened in the last year? The dogs that we didn't adopt because they're so healthy and living so long, it's pretty hard to adopt them now. Most people that want to adopt a dog will adopt a dog that's under four years of age. Our dogs here now are all between the ages of ten to twenty-seven years of age. So. Whereas we were doing a lot of adoptions, we've actually now become more of a sanctuary. Mm. And, you know, because the dogs, and even though they're running around perfect, the average person doesn't want to adopt a 16-year-old Great Dane because right. if they took it to a vet, the vet would say, that's impossible. Yeah. You can't have a 16-year-old <laughs> right. Great Dane. Right, right. So, we, so that, that is, but, but, but we do have a program on our rescue website, which is GentleGiantsRescue.com. We have two websites, GentleGiantsDogFood.com for the food and GentleGiantsRescue.com for rescue. But we have a program called uh, Canine Crusader Superheroes to the Rescue. And basically what we do is we encourage people to make some contribution, even if it means taking a blanket or, or something over to an animal shelter. In other words, just do something 
to make the life of an animal a little bit easier. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sadly, um, there are some of these national organizations that try to play on people's fears and emotions to donate money. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. We, we have found that uh, some mm-hmm. of that is very unscrupulous. Right. Uh, on the contrary, but every city has a local animal shelter. And if you could bring or bring some food over or, or for, you know, cat food or dog food or gentle giant dog food or cat food, that would be great, even better. Or, or bring a blanket or do something just to make it a little easier. The people that work in shelters, they care for these animals. And it's heart-wrenching because if they don't find them home, they, they don't get to live. Yeah. So we, we try everything and encourage people to contribute to being a canine crusader superhero and that information is on our gentle giants dog our gentle giants rescue.com website i gotta have my uh daughter's boss talk to you uh your wife or yourself because uh she works at the uh, animal veterinary college in santa Clarita. They, i would love to have uh them do something with you guys or whatever because you got such a great organization well, you, you know what i would really like i'll tell you this sincerely because we are so so into this whole concept of health and longevity and because we've been so successful with it i would love to tie in with either a university or some place that can do the real documentable research because you know we we can't say uh things like on our bag that our dogs are living to 27 and a half years now we can show pictures of our dogs mm-hmm. and their ages at 27 and a half years but we can't really say anything without this having like university um, documentation exactly. that's submitted to the FDA, all of this stuff that requires enormous amount of research that only really a university or a, you know that, that, or a college of, uh, of, of veterinary medicine could do. But we would love to tie in because if, if someone ever took the time to see what we really do here, how we do it, how we help these dogs live longer, every single dog here is in our program. Every single dog, for example, is fed five or more times a day. Elevated food dish. No exercise an hour before, hour after after eating. No riding in a car but hour before, hour after eating to mm-hmm. avoid a deadly condition called bloat and torsion. We have so much information. And we have information that even vets don't have. Vets have medical information. Exactly. But they're no, not they necessarily nutritionists. And <clears throat> we've got the top nutritionists in the country. And and you know, we use vets for surgeries and medical, but when it comes to feeding and care, uh-uh, right. no, no, no. We, we, we've got our own technique, and it works great. So if you have that kind of connection, I'd love to work with a, 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 a college or university to develop this where this could be published and it becomes standard information for everybody worldwide. Right. you got to be talking to your boss, Definitely, too, for yes, sure. For sure. Uh, one last question before you go, and I know we got to let you go. I just appreciate you being on the phone with us so much on your bat line or on your bad <laughs> phone. Uh, next week, because we're kind of doing bat mania for two weeks, we're going to be having on the daughter of Eartha Kitt. Now, I posted a picture of you setting... Uh, between scenes in your director's chair you had your Robin costume on you wasn't wearing your mask but Eartha was in the street clothes and you were talking to Eartha can you tell us any Eartha kid stories uh, you know she was an amazingly talented woman as you know I mean just an amazingly talented singer dancer everything uh, and she was a very intense person you know I don't have a specific story but but when she approached her work with a really even though it, it stuff was funny, she did it in a way that was such dedicated to the art of doing it, if you know right. what I'm saying. Right. You know right. what I mean? Where you really get into something. And, and I rem- that was my experience with, with Eartha. She was a, a very, very, very serious about even doing something that's funny. You know what I mean? You, 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 some people really take it seriously. You know, and, and uh, yeah, we did meet uh, Eartha Kitt's... Uh, uh, a, a daughter there at, at the Hollywood mm-hmm. Museum who is, and she's very charming, oh, very yeah. nice, very sweet person. And uh, so, yeah, no, I think that'll be a great uh, a great thing for you to have her on. And you know something, one more time as we let you go here, that was one more thing that Batman was groundbreaking because Star Trek, in a way, was like that too because they had a major black actress play one of the, the crew members. Uh-huh, yeah. And with you to have a, a woman of African-American descent who was Eartha Kitt to play a major villain like that? That wasn't done in the '60s. No, you're you're absolutely correct. And uh, and there were other. We had some some uh, 
uh, we had other people that were on our show of, of uh, Hispanic and and other uh, ethnicities that uh, were great too. We we were really a show about people and fun and laughter. And you know there were so many stars that wanted to be on our show, and there was just not enough villain roles. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, there's just and so what they did is they created the scene of Batman and Robin, Adam and I, climbing up the side of a building, and the the window would open and you talk about African American. Sammy Davis Jr. Yes, opened yes. the window, and there he was talking with us. And uh, other great actors, uh, and uh, I mean, there was just, you know, uh, Colonel Clink, I think uh, Lurch was on. Yeah. <laughs> we had uh, uh, Betty White. We yeah, had, had, I mean, there, there were just so many people that made appearances with that window opening. My, my was, favorite, my really favorite, cool. I got to tell you, my favorite was Jerry Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Jerry Lewis was on there. He, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and all these people, uh, you know, everyone added a flavor. And I'll tell you something: the the their their kids were driving them crazy. They, these actors would come on the show, even if it's for the one scene with the window opening, and say, "I can't get any peace at home. My kids are driving me nuts to be on this show. I'm doing this, and so I can go home and not have to hear about this." Anymore, you know? Well, it's a cool thing because Victoria Price, Vincent Price's daughter told me that her daddy told her over and over Egghead was the, <laughs> the best thing he ever did. He loved playing Egghead. Well, let me tell you, now I have an Egghead story with, with Vincent Price if sure. you have time to hear it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this was the final scene, okay, uh, in, in the Egghead show, where Egghead has, uh, had captured me, has kind of got me in a neck lock, okay, Batman breaks in the door, and he, they have this dialogue together, okay, and then uh, a fight big starts, okay, and uh, and at the end of the fight, I'm supposed to pick up a half a dozen eggs and throw them at, at Egghead, right? Right. Okay. So here's what happens, though. Uh, Vincent Price had a kind of a funny side to him too, oh, yeah. and he and Adam decided to play a little trick on me. <laughs> oh, so no. when the when, the way it is, they said action, okay. Batman bursts in, they have some dialogue, and he's breaking eggs over my head, you know, in between the lines, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. at each time that they, they, they did this little scene before the fight started, I was supposed to have three eggs, real eggs, broken on my head, okay? Well, they purposely goofed up seven takes. <laughs> I had 21 eggs oh. broken on my head. Wow. I had egg eggs going down into my costume, into my undershorts. <laughs> I mean, and and I must tell you something. Even though it doesn't hurt to get one or two eggs broken on your head, you get twenty-one eggs broken on your head, and I'm telling you, you're you're a little bit dizzy. Well, let me tell you, when they thought that was so funny, but when, when that last take, okay, and I got free, I picked up not a half a dozen eggs. I picked up a dozen eggs. I didn't throw them at at Egghead Vincent Price. I went over and I hit him so hard on his egg that it moved his egg, okay, <laughs> on his head. With that dozen eggs, I really hit him so hard, and everybody's like, oh, my God, Bert went berserk, you know? <laughs> There's a thousand stories in the city. Boy, if those two uh, little star placards on the Hollywood Walk of Fame could talk. Let me tell you, there'd be all kinds of stories. Well, thank you so much, Bert, and, and thanks to your lovely wife. Uh, your lovely wife, God, I'm just so glad you guys found each other because... You guys are perfect, and and what you're doing is just a great thing to help out all these canine friends of ours. Except my cat is really pissed off because she wants to know, uh, and and we got a, a male as well wants to know if you guys are going to branch out into cat food. Yes, we are. Before the end of the year, yes. we'll have our new cat food out. And I'll tell you what, something real quick: how we got involved. We are not experts with cats, mm -hmm. but last year, two of our cats died. One that okay, one was. 31 years old wow. and the other was wow. 32 years old oh my god guess what they were eating guess what they were eating our dog food, dog food. Really? in other words yes now now let me explain we do know that dog uh, cats require a little more protein than dogs so we had regular cat food available but we wanted to test because so many of the people write to us and say what do i do i can't keep my cats out of the dog's food you know is it safe yeah. It's perfectly safe. 
but they were eating more of our dog food than they were of their cat food. And these two, what, 31 and 32 years of age. So we realized that what we've got going with nearly $4 million spent developing the finest dog food in the world, good quality food is great for any living creature. Yeah. And it works on cats too. So now we've modified our dog food to take in all of the nutrients and special things for cats the top nutritionists in the country have worked on this. We just got our first sample. We're test feeding it to cats now. They seem to love it. And so we will have a gentle giant cat and, and kitten food come out. And, and by the way, our, our dog food, our gentle giant dog food is not just for dogs, but it's for puppies as well. We start dogs or puppies at three and a half weeks on our gentle giant dog food. And the same food that we feed to three and a half week old puppies we feed to our 25, 26, and 27-year-old seniors. Perfect. And the same food that we feed to our giant 250-pound Great Danes, we feed to our tiny chihuahuas, and <laughs> even smaller than that is a, what's called a Chinese crested. Yes. A chihuahua weighs five and a half to six pounds. A Chinese crested, as an adult, can be as small as two pounds. Wow, never so heard the of that. So the two-pound dog eat the same food that the 250 pound dog. <laughs> Everybody eats the same food. Well, my cats will be happy to hear that. One of our uh, favorite rooms that they love in, in the house, we've got the uh, bat insignia, so we call it the bat room because there's a toilet in there too. But, <laughs> but he'll be happy to eat your, your food for sure. Well, that, I have that's to be getting nice. some of this because our oldest cat that we adopted, is uh, she's 17 years old. Yeah. So she's not a spring chicken anymore. So uh, we'll have to head over to GentleGiantsDogFood.com and uh, pick up some of that until you guys have your cat. Yeah, it, 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 and we'll announce which stores are going to have it. You know, here in Southern California, we're in Stater Brothers and Ralph mm -hmm. Gelson's as well as Walmart. And across the country, we're in various local uh, grocery stores in addition to Walmart. And certainly online at Walmart.com, uh, PetSmart.com, Chewy.com, Jet.com, Groupon.com, TractorSupply.com. All of these have our our dog food but again everything we do is for charity and we only have one goal that every animal have a chance to live the longest healthiest happiest life possible right so is your book still available i know you wrote a book i don't maybe you're going to be writing another yeah one. it's called boy wonder my life in tight there you go all right <laughs> and, and and it is it's actually a collector's item but there are you you can find it on ebay and uh and some places uh, occasionally um, and, uh, it, you know, I, I, every once in a while at an event, somebody will come up with that, that book, and I'll say, well, now, wait a minute, are you 18 years old? Well, yeah, I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you've got great humor because you certainly don't seem to have a problem with, uh, you know, being a grown man with children and, and married and everything. You're still called the boy wonder. <laughs> but, but you definitely had the best legs in 60s television, I'm telling you. And you guys, well, I, you know, it's so funny. It's so funny that you say that because I did. I would have girls come up and say that and stuff like that. But you, you know, I, I don't know. It, 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 I was just very fortunate. And you know, I'll tell you one last thing. When I was selected for the role, uh, there were eleven 1 hundred young actors that tried out for this role. Yeah, wow. eleven 1 hundred. And when they selected me, the executive producer came to me and said, "Bert, we selected you out of more than eleven 1 hundred young men that we interviewed." Would you like to know why we selected you to play Robin? I said, yeah, I would like to know. They said, because in our minds, okay, forgetting television, forget that there's a television series. If there really was a Robin, I mean like the real thing, mm -hmm. we think you, Bert, personally would be it. So we don't want you to play a character. We actually want you to play yourself. Be yourself and be enthusiastic. And that's, of course, if you notice, I'm a little bit enthusiastic, not too much. But, 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 and that's what I did for 120 episodes. And when I recorded my voice uh, two years ago for these two movies for Warner Brothers, the executive producer of, of these movies came up to me and he said, you know, Bert, we're all here listening to your voice and we're like shocked. You sound exactly like you sounded 50 years yeah, ago. It's yeah. almost scary. You you sound the same. I swear to God, you must be eating some of that dog food that you guys. You, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. 
All right. Well, Bert, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us tonight. We encourage all of our listeners, check out uh, GentleGiantsDogFood.com to find out everywhere that you can pick up the dog food and also uh, find out more information about the rescue over at GentleGiantsRescue.com. And we'll be watching for you on Supergirl. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure probably if they film it in October, it'll be sometime probably after the first of the year. But I don't know. We'll uh, we'll try to keep people posted. And, of course, uh, I hope you guys can come out uh, and hopefully in early January. I, ideally, it would be around the time that our show came on, uh, you know, that I would get the star, which was January 12, 1966. But that's a Sunday, so I know that that can't happen. It's got to be a Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. But hopefully it'll be close around that date. And I'd love for you guys to come out, and uh, we're going to have a lot of people there and a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm sure fun. you, I'm sure you know this, but man, Adam's going to be there. He he's going to be so proud of you getting that star. I mean, he's going to be there in spirit. Yeah, yeah I, I I absolutely believe it. And you know, uh, I miss him very much. And we had a great friendship. It's one of these things that I actually calculated that because I worked with him not just during the show but after the show that 75% of the time that I have been on this planet Earth, I knew and worked with Adam. Can you imagine that? Wow. 75% of my life I worked with this man. And what the great guy, and oh, and he was so nice to Tracy. And I mean, it, we all just, our families just had great admiration for each other. Well, to many and also to other hosts on our show, uh, you were on uh, Ghosty's show on WFDU, and he also contributes to here. He, to this day, will fight anyone that says that you and Adam were not the Batman and Robin. Oh, well, th- th- thank you. You know, we love the roles. We love making people happy. And, and you know something? We had, uh, we had fun that was great for the entire family. This was family entertainment for every member of the family, no matter how young or how old. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Bert, so much. We have had so much fun. Uh, Terry was fanboying out a little bit before we got on the phone with you because he's like, "I'm so excited! I get to talk to Robin." And now we get to play his. <laughs> we get to play his record. So yes, yes. So thank you again so much, uh, listeners. Check out GentleGiantsDogFood.com. And Bert, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And love to your wife. Well, thank you, citizens. <laughs> to the Batmobile. Right. Bye-bye. Bye bye.